Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, the Two Opinionated podcast could really use your help. And it's easy. It's free. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, imdb.com, named us a top 100 podcast. We came in at number 82. That's a big deal because there's 15 million podcasts and growing. So to be named to anybody's top 100 list, pretty big deal for us. And the way you can help is to go to imdb.com, look up the Two Opinionated podcast, and that's it. Just bringing our page up. That traffic really helps us out. Our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. All we ask is that you subscribe. It's also free, but that really helps us to attract these amazing guests that we keep bringing on the program. And that's it. Two easy ways for you to support us, and we would really appreciate the help. Now let's get to that interview. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got actress Jillian Reeves with me. So welcome, Jillian. Thank you. Uh, I'm glad to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, we've been talking for like 10 minutes yeah. off camera and, and We're old friends now. the best time. <laughs> <laughs> You guys missed Sorry, it like you be there. <laughs> That's too so, funny. It's so, so, Jillian, let's start this way. You know, tell me a little bit about what got you into acting. Difficult profession. You know, why did yeah. you decide to go into that? Oh, so I started acting in college. Yeah. Um, because um, so I, I got pregnant in high school, had twins, started oh, college. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. That's an interesting take on it. Thank you. Great choice. I'm of the opinion that you can't go wrong with children. Uh, you know, uh, you know. Well, so my first semester of college, I kind of went wrong and I did terribly. So my next semester, I was like, I got to pull it together. I got to right. do classes. I got to get this GPA up because there's a thing called academic probation <laughs> and they might right. not let you stay. So I decided to take all easy classes, one of which was acting. And then uh, I love that. It was kind of like a, a desperation random, type of thing. A random yeah, occurrence. And uh, that professor was like, I think you have something. And he asked me to audition for the play that he was producing that year. I, I went to USC. I say the real USC, which is South Carolina. <laughs> out here, right. I knew what there. you meant. <laughs> all right. FCC all day. Right. So <laughs> so uh, and in the, the theater productions were huge there. Right. Like because there was people getting their masters in directing and set design and costumes. Yeah. So it was a huge affair for the town. The state newspaper came out and reviewed you. So like these productions were real productions. And I auditioned for that. And then I got in that uh, that play. And then I just started doing plays every season. And then I eventually just switched over to become a theater major. And uh, that that's how I started. And then I went to grad school in Chicago and started working with people from, um, you know, Second City and the yeah. Goodman and, and doing a lot of plays there, uh, doing independent productions and uh, independent films and commercials and stuff there. And then I made a... Uh, the jump to LA. So it was sort of South Carolina and then Chicago and then LA. That's amazing. Well, yeah. yeah. You know, us it's West Virginians, you know, West mm -hmm. Virginia is our favorite vacation spots, Myrtle Beach. See, I can imagine that. Actually, I have an Airbnb in South Carolina Ooh. and I'm amazed. I would have never imagined it would be like consistently busy. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Like Lake Murray, Myrtle Beach, Charleston, they've really become these little destination spots. Yeah, so they I really do. That. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty, it's a pretty nice area. It's not too it's bad. Too, right. I don't know West Virginia, honestly. So I don't know where you're coming from exactly. Well, you um, need to come up, but come in the fall when the leaves are changing colors. That's when, it's, that when it's nice. Yeah. And I would imagine horses. Are there a lot of horses there? We've I don't got know a lot why. of horses. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love a lot horses. of anything, anything outdoors. Okay. That's West Virginia. All right. If you like, if you like rock climbing or, you know, the uh, white, white water rafting, anything like that, zip line. Is that West Virginia? Like, Interesting. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I do like outside. I don't know about the rocks, but I'd like a good height. Yeah, I know. I got, I I got a fair height. I'm not going up there. <laughs> 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 See, I had this thought that being a young parent probably mm -hmm. helped you with your acting because I think that's part, as a mm -hmm. young person, most of the time, you've got no life experience to draw on. <laughs> but if you've got some... It probably help you with the acting. 
Oh, that's an interesting thought. Well, I will say that I think when you are young, like I can't sort of imagine um, doing twins and working and doing all that stuff now. Like I think I'd be yeah. exhausted. So I think when you're young, you're just like, I got it. I can do it. I just have right. to focus. And, and you know, <laughs> you, you don't have no know idea. That, right. that, that you shouldn't be able to do it. <laughs> yeah. You have no idea about anything, but you have the supreme confidence that right. you're going to be able to do it. And it's like my fa I Now I think back, my family must have been horrified. I'm like, yeah, I'm moving to Chicago. They're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> What? And I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to take the bus up there and then I'm going to find a place and then I'll bring in. And, and I, I remember my mother's face, like just Do you know she was concerned. <laughs> but, I, but I actually had no idea. I was like, oh, I don't understand. I got this. I got it. So I, I think I always had something inside that was like, I got this. I just got to figure it out. Just give me a second. Give me a second. I got this. <laughs> uh, so this is the beauty of youth, right? Like, Well, now, and I'm sure she's come around now. Oh, you know, oh my gosh. Well, like, you know, we lost her last year, oh, but I'm she was, uh, yeah, certainly so proud at the end. Because I think after I, I was gone a couple years and like nothing horrific happened, right. you know, <laughs> like, they're like, I think she might have this. I think somehow she's working this all out. And then I started to bring her out. And then I would bring her to California because she's an older Southern woman from yeah. a teeny, teeny, tiny town. So the first time she was even on a plane, right, it was Amazing. because she came to visit me in Chicago. So I think she learned to sort of love that. And then I got her out of her comfort zone. And right. she was super great about like being adaptive. And then, you know, she comes to L.A. I have her in yoga and doing acupuncture. <laughs> <laughs> and she was just ride or die. She's like, let's go. What are we going to do? Uh, that's awesome. Well, you know, as a parent, we just want to make sure you've got something that you can make a living at. So she was probably like, I wonder what her backup plan is. <laughs> right. <laughs> At least and until she, you got to the point where she's like, ah, I think she can do it. Yeah, I do remember some she'll be backs. And, uh, you know, like yep. I remember, and I was just, I remember thinking like, they're crazy. Like, I am, <laughs> are you insane? Right. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I, all I knew from a young age is like, I'm getting out of here. Like, I'll, I don't know. I don't know if I had a, I didn't have any particular plans. I just knew I'm, I'm getting out of here. You're going somewhere. Like, I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. We we don't have to because I was in the rural south, so we were getting in wood. We had well water, you know. I mean, like oh, we no. were like little, we were a little house on the prairie in it, right? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, I got to get out of here. I gotta, I gotta go somewhere where I could just turn some heat on and the, right. and the air comes on and it and it cools the whole apartment, not just this room. So yeah, those were those were all my motivations. <laughs> They're like, what's your motivation? Pretty good motivations, yeah. <laughs> That's not bad. <laughs> We we enjoyed you on the unicorn. You popped up that on the episode. Cool. Yeah. We love that show. Oh, that's awesome. That was a fun show, right? That's, yeah. Yeah, that was pre-pandemic. That was like the last thing I did right before, like actually it was it was it was during pandemic, but before everything shut down, because we were oh, all man. in face masks and had to get nope. tested. It was wild times here. We man. came back from uh we were out at Sundance and, mm -hmm. and we came back and like a week later everything shut down. Yeah, it um it was getting pretty crazy in LA. Like this was oh, an yeah. interesting place to be. Like cuz that was during like the protests and all sorts of protests from the from yeah. masks to 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 George Floyd, I think, and there was, was a lot going on. There was so much like like it was crazy. I'm on Ventura Boulevard to see it just like shut down. Like just it was so crazy. And so actually during that time I decided to like leave and i went to italy so i moved to italy during the pandemic for about a year i, I just I, I escaped the madness i was gonna say a lot of people probably would have done that that's pretty yeah, awesome no, it was awesome like it, like italy is beautiful there's not all those people like you really like because right now there's so many tourists i don't even know how people are doing it but like at that point like you could be in the center you felt like the town was yours yeah. you know it was obviously a difficult time what's but, your um, uh, what's your italian dish my Italian dish? Yeah. You know what? Italian dishes, real Italian dishes, are so different than what anybody yeah. in America. Like, there's no such thing as fettuccine Alfredo. Right. <laughs> like, that's, it's fake. I don't know where it came from. Maybe it's the New York Italians. I don't oh, know. It came from us. I guarantee it. It doesn't. It doesn't exist. <laughs> like, you can't order pepperoni pizza in Italian. Like, it doesn't exist. Like, you know, so. Um, do they, they have, do have a pizza have, there or something like a pizza? Similar. Oh, they have tons of pizza. Yeah. And for a ta for like if a pepperoni, you would call it, I think it's, they don't call it salami, but they would also, it would be like, uh, I don't remember. They don't call it pepperoni, but yeah. it's very, very, very similar. Yeah. Um, and I can't remember it now, but actually the pizza is great. 
and mm-hmm. like the, the lasagnas are great the pastas are really great they love pork pork is huge really uh, all kinds of pork like 20 it'd be kinds. pretty disappointing to go to italy and the pasta to be bad yeah, there's just pork everywhere. So after like a year, I was like, do you have a chicken? Is there a chicken in the vicinity? Can someone just grill it? Don't there's so much it. pork you can <laughs> eat. <laughs> and put some greens, like no more pasta, like just <laughs> greens and some chicken. And like, I'm good because there's a lot of pasta. A lot of carbs. Day. Pasta all day, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and pork all day, all sorts of things. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so you've got a new movie coming out. Uh, I do, I do. Sound of Hope, the story of Possum Trot. So, yep. so tell me what the movie's about. What's your role in it? So we open this week. We open on July 4th. And I know. If you're going to pick a day to open, you couldn't pick a better one. I know, right? Yeah, I really hope that people... I know it's hot outside, right? So you do your fireworks. You're right. burning up. You might as well go inside the theater and yeah. watch this amazing film with your family. <laughs> I mean, it's it's based on a true story. Yep. from this little town in Texas called Possum Trots. Um, and it's about a, a church congregation. Um, so it's led by the bishop, Bishop W.C. Martin, and his first lady, Donna Martin. And they inspire the congregation to adopt 20, well, 22 families in this congregation, adopt 77 of the hardest to place kids in the foster care system. And so I play the first lady's sister and the first to adopt. She's a single mom. I met her in real life. She's just the most beautiful, amazing woman. Just such. Well, you have to be, I think, to just to to give of yourself like that. Unbelievable. Yeah. And as a single mom, so having been a single mom, as a single mom, she had a daughter and she brought in three boys. Wow. uh, Who are home. And, you know, these are not people of tremendous means like they worked in poultry factories like you know this is a town without stoplights a town without wendy's and mcdonald's really small town and they took in just yeah they they wiped out the foster care crisis in their town so this is the story uh uh, uh, and they were actually featured on like oprah back in the day and good morning america so the story had gotten out there but this is the first film about what they went through and um it's just amazing it it really is full of so much heart um it's full of the idea of what real love is right like that 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 it's It is long suffering, that it is understanding and forgiving. It shows what communities can do when communities come together um, and work together and sacrifice for each other. And it really shows what what can happen when that happens. And you can really change the lives of these children and change their trajectory. So it was such just a, a, a great film to work on. I'm so proud of it. And I hope everyone goes to see it. Yeah, and and you should be. And a, and a couple of uh, uh, thoughts. I I love the that it's about a small town. You know, I grew up in a small town. Some of the best people that I know have lived yeah. in a, 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 that little town. Have never left. You know, mm-hmm. never been anywhere. Um, just the the best people. And I think especially now we really need some positive movies yeah. out there you know some stuff to uplift us and to, to show us that there's there's good out there and and that uh, people are out there you know helping each other and i think that's a nice reminder for everybody absolutely and i i love that it's such a it, it's a film that can appeal to so many people oh. like right like it because it is just so pure in its message so i think that not only that it's a reminder that there's good out there but then there's a reminder like when we look at all these problems and they feel overwhelming, it also like empowers us because like we can actually do something, right? You can feel really watching the news and and every update and all, you can feel really powerless. Like, oh my gosh, there's all these issues. I can't, it can feel like you're drowning in problems. But if you just pick this, an area, right? And lock arms with people who are like-minded, like you can change people's lives. So I love that it's showing a positive message, but I like that it also, that hopefully our goal and our, our hope is that it also inspires people to say, you know what, if these poor people in this little teeny town could yeah. change the lives of almost a hundred kids, like what, what could I do with what I have? Like, you know, what can I do yeah. with my, my time or, you know, so I, I think both of those things um, are beautiful about it, that it, that it is a positive story, but it also empowers us to take some positive action to help our communities. Yeah, I, I love that. And I also love the fact that it highlights some positives about uh, a church 
You know, we we especially now we, there's a lot of negatives out there around, around yeah, right? the church and religion and all that. I grew yeah. up my uh, my grandfather was a Baptist minister, so I grew up around around the church. And some of those negatives are probably uh, warranted, sure. but there's a lot of good and a lot of good people in in uh, especially smaller churches. And mm-hmm. I love that it highlighted the fact that this little church made <laughs> such a big impact. And it really does kind of challenge the rest of us to kind of step up a little bit. Yeah. You know, I grew up in a small town. My daddy was a Methodist pastor, right? Yeah. So, yeah. so I, 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 know I used it. to say the only difference in Baptist and Methodist was uh, the baptism. <laughs> right. It's a dunk or a sprinkle. <laughs> right, right. And then and then my mom was very open. So we went to like holiness church. We were, you know, yeah. south of, I'm from a Bible belt. Like so 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 Same. church is part of the social community. Right. Like that was the social life. And and all of your family were there because we were from a huge family. Yeah. So, you know, it was very social, like, right? But they that that type of church really did like serve each other. So if there was somebody who couldn't pay a bill, like the church came together and helped them and like they were really part of a community. So no, I know what you mean. And and I do think that as churches have changed and grown and people are more transplanted, um, there are and have been many negative stories, you know, about things that happen in the church. And, and there, you know, they, some people are a bit burnout or a bit weary or a bit wary. Um, So I do love that we are showing this church that just has this really pure, true heart. Um, and that they are that kind of old time religion. That's what my mama would say, yeah. <laughs> right? That really, really comes together and really just wants to love, love these right. kids, love each other. Um, it's not about, you know, building funds and <laughs> like whatever That's else. Right. Like That's right. Private planes, right? It's, like, it's literally just just getting down to the essence of, of the love of God and the love that we all should have in our hearts towards our fellow men. Right. So right. I just love that. And and I agree. And I, and I think that it could be, and my hope that is it, it will be um, sort of this, this uh, something that touches people's hearts that might feel a little bit like um burnt out by the church stories yeah. or burnt out by the modern the modern churches and what can happen and say like okay that's these people with their <laughs> issues but the message uh, and the power of faith is is still there like that has not changed even though some of the messengers might have been flawed right right that's uh, right, right? <laughs> <laughs> No, it's a, so it comes out uh, on the fourth that's amazing yeah. did you get to do a uh, red carpet Oh gosh, yes. We actually did, did a lot. I love so this Angel Studios, who also put out like Sound of Freedom and yeah. The Chosen was on there. Um, they've been really great about doing all of these screenings all around the country. So I, I've gotten to see so many audiences' reactions. Um, that's great. why I know you guys are gonna love it when you come out. And yeah, we did a, a we did a, a premiere here in LA. We did one in Atlanta, and there's gonna be one for the people of Possum Trot. With that the story was based oh, on exciting. tomorrow so that's awesome yeah really yeah. Like, it does it so show um some of the actual people like in the end credits yeah yeah, yeah. So you'll i love when it. movies do that right yeah and i think that's when everybody's like oh my gosh yeah <laughs> even me when i saw it like i was pretty i knew the story so i was pretty stoic and the end got me and i was just like sobbing uh because you see the kids as adults you, you, yeah it's 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 you I and mean, it really hits you like oh this happened this was a thing that people really did and these people exist and they were really affected and it's that's amazing that's yeah. amazing that's awesome yeah good you for gave you gave away the end no i'm kidding i wanted to ask you about your uh, short film uh, broken oh, yeah. Tell me about that a little bit. I thought I thought it sounded so interesting. Yeah, so yeah, I'm broken. Is the the story? I'm a I'm a I'm a mental health advocate, and and it's a short film that really sort of highlights the complexities of the broken mental health system in the U.S. and how it affects the caregivers. Right. So we oftentimes think about like you know the, the people that are really struggling with mental illness. We see them on the street. We see homeless people. And we think like, oh, they don't have family. They don't have people who love them. They they don't. And it's not true. So many caregivers are burnt out. They're exhausted. They feel like their hands are tied. Um, So just wanted to really show that this issue of mental illness doesn't only affect the person with the condition, but 
their caregivers, their grandmothers, their mothers, their brothers, their sisters, like everyone who loves them. And if we really give that some attention, um, we can also change our societies. If we can see like what is broken and really come together to fix it, there's still such a stigma about mental illness. So many people don't like to talk about it. Um, this is actually um, National BIPOC Mental Health Month, which is a mouthful, and basically is Black, Indigenous, and people of color, formerly yeah. known as minority, right? So bless right. so. So we're actually, um, in about two weeks, going to do a virtual panel that I call Caregiver Corner. And so we're really going to give the caregivers, uh, whether honestly you're dealing with people with mental illness, parents with dementia, just caregivers, some coping mechanisms. Yeah. Uh, you know, caregivers for foster kids, you know, coping mechanisms, um, support ideas, just really things to help the people who are caring for these vulnerable people, some tools to not burn out, to 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 do some self-care, to really keep themselves healthy, because we need the caregivers healthy in order to care for the children, the parents, the people right. that are, have mental conditions. So um, Broken is a part of that. And then we're doing this, um, we're doing this virtual panel with therapists and other caregivers to oh, really sort of spread that word out there to give them the support that they need. You know, oftentimes, yeah. only, oftentimes they're only applauded like, oh, you're doing great. Oh, you're taking those kids. Oh, right. you're dealing with your mom. But that's not really being supportive. Uh -oh. you're like, I'm so, so we froze up for just a second. Our power dropped, but now we're back better than <laughs> <laughs> so, so we were talking about uh, broken, and yeah. you know, I wanted to, to say that you know I think if we could get a handle on the mental health issues that we have in this country, that might be a solution to some of the homeless problems. Oh we my gosh! In this country, oh, you know, and and you've been in LA, you've lived out there some, and it's it's such an issue that normally you would expect that to only happen in bigger cities, but it's happening everywhere now. And, mm -hmm. and a lot of times it's maybe something that we could help if we put our minds to it. You know, it's a lot of it is, is caused by mental issues. Oh, 100%. In fact, a lot. So some of broken the, the last sequence of broken, we, we just go shoot LA, like we shoot the streets and it's horrible right um but to your point my the place in south carolina homeless people all over the place yeah. i never seen that growing up and mental illness is a huge part of it and uh and and it's really difficult to get treatment for someone who's yeah. an adult with mental illness so whether there's some insurance issues and then there's just the idea of they they have a right to be sick even though their mind can't really determine right. that they're sick. So, so this is the hard part, right? Is the intersection of like where, uh, where does their right to be sick begin and end, and where do we have a duty to care for them, knowing they have a brain disease begin and end? And so, I try to show a lot of those complexities in Broken. It's a short; it's only fifteen minutes, um, but we do have plans to expand that to a feature. I was going to um, ask because it seems like that would make a good movie. I know, no, it would be great. We, I've been on the fence because I kind of wanted to do a, a a limited series, like you know, oh, like a seven episode yeah, arc nice. to really dig into it. Um, so that's you know, so I'm writing both, which is ridiculous uh, because I can't make up my mind. But I think people have no idea what goes on. I'm sort of similar to 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 this film, Sound of Hope. I had no idea what was going on in the foster care system unless you're in it, you don't know. And I've had extensive experience in this mental health world and people really can't conceive of the issues involved and so it's really pushing me to um to broaden it out and to and to make it into a feature and even to continue to show the short because that at least shows you what some people have no idea they have no idea of the barriers to care um and and how that affects everyone and so many people suffer in silence. So many yes. caregivers, family members, they're so ashamed. And, and I, I'm a big proponent of ending the stigma. I speak very openly about mental health. And the more openly I speak, the more I notice people will say, well, you know, my brother actually, uh -huh. or, you know, I haven't seen my son in a year or like I, the stories that come to me just because I'm open about it. And, and, it, you know, yeah. So, so it affects serious mental illness affects one in five. Wow. One in five, right? A serious. I mean, we don't 
have stigmas about going to the doctor for physical issues. Why would right. we, you know, if it's a problem, it's a problem. You shouldn't yeah. have an issue with going to get help with that. Well, you know what I think? I think it's a self-fulfilling problem. So I think they don't get treatment and then they act out. And that can be a disturbing sight to see, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that makes people ashamed. So I really think the stigma is around untreated mental illness. <laughs> because when treated, they can function very well. People with those illnesses can work and they can be creative and they can create right. art. You know, it's really when they're left untreated that, that, you know, and Hollywood is, is to blame, right? Also, because we have those psycho images or one flew over the cuckoo's next image. So like, you know, my my town does not help this, this, <laughs> this, this stigma, right? Because it's very popular to sensationalize the worst That's of the right. symptoms. But, you know, I, I watched A Beautiful Mind on the plane coming back from the Atlanta premiere, really beautifully done and showed sort of a lot of those complexities too. So yeah, we have to get lawmakers involved. We have to get the stigma erased. We have to get people right. talking um, because I think the more attention these things get, that's when the government and, and and other entities really wake up. But as long as people are too ashamed to speak, they're vulnerable and can't speak for themselves, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that yeah, we're needed. We're needed. Well, good to make for it you. Better. That's that's such a, a a noble endeavor. I think so. Yeah. Best of luck with that. I hope you do get it into a, a limited thank series you. or a movie. That. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. I you know, know. You I, have to come back if that happens. We can talk <laughs> absolutely. <again. laughs> absolutely, I will. And yeah. definitely follow us and tune in for that caregiver forum. Anybody out there who is, you know, a little stress or yeah. wants better coping mechanisms because we're all, you know, caring for someone, especially as we get older with our parents, um, people who are amazing and foster and adopt, or even sometimes our own kids, right? right. You know, like, yeah, yeah, it's really true. So, um, yeah, we need support. We need to support the people who are supporting people. And I hope Broken is going to be a, a big part of that and a big part of raising awareness for the real day-to-day -day what's going on with families who are dealing with mental I health. I think it will. I think it will. Yeah, that, I, I think the uh, that gentleman from A Beautiful Mind was from West Virginia, if I remember correctly. He was, John Nash. And brilliant. Uh, with schizophrenia, won the Nobel Prize, changed. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah of course, I just saw it. So, uh, but yeah, um, and, the, you know, the treatments back in the day were rough. Like they yeah. were showing him getting these crazy shock therapies and just wild. So, well, and, you know, what are we missing out on? You know, because mm -hmm. a lot of those exactly. people in, in certain ways are brilliant. And yeah. what are we yeah. missing out on by not? Uh, and, I, and I do think it's an indictment of us to be able to walk by people on the side of the road like they have no humanity, like they have no family, like they have no, you know, and and but I do think a lot of it is they don't understand. And that is why I made the film. Um, and I love this conversation because it's really inspiring me to rededicate oh, good. myself to showing it and to really finishing the feature because I, I think it is absolutely needed. And you're right, because now it's not just L.A., it's not just everywhere. D.C. or New York. It is everywhere. And the pandemic, I think, has increased that level of. Well, it has. And you can so, see that in L.A. Yeah. You know, when I went out there pre-pandemic and came back after, definitely had gotten worse. Mm. Well, it. even South Carolina, right? Like, yeah. uh, I mean, I'm amazed to see just people. Yeah, I, I'm amazed, honestly. Right? Well, and like, I think a, a lot of us, it, it's so overwhelming that mm. that's kind of what you end up doing. You try to just ignore the issue. And right. that's, that's really the wrong approach. Right. You know, it, it's we, we need to to uh, be lending, you know, our support, mm -hmm. our, our help if we're able to give it, but at least the support of others who are trying to help and try to right. solve the problem. <laughs> And caregivers are exhausted. So you have, you know, the people who are suffering from mental health conditions, they can't advocate for themselves. The caregivers right. are hanging on by a thread, right? So they can't advocate. And then so who's left to advocate for these people? Yeah, you know no what I mean? Uh, yeah. And that's a really big problem, except for the government just trying to do what they think, but not not really understanding the issues or the doctors. And then you have the insurance companies, <laughs> you have the pharma. I mean, it's right. It's really, really big issues. Um, but I think if we can really cultivate people from the, you know, the ground up saying this is what we need, this is what needs to change. If our voices can be loud enough. Uh, more research um, in, in into you know brain health and what's causing a lot of these things. Right. More, more investment, um, you know, things can change really, really quickly. 
I always say like, look at, you know, HIV came up in the eighties and there was a huge outcry money poured in like, in, like the attention stayed on that issue. And like, look at the leaps and bounds we went in 20, 30 years. Yeah. Like, like it's incredible. And I think, but you know, mental illness isn't this hot, <laughs> let's right. focus on it issue, but hopefully we can change that. Maybe we can make it I a hope little so. bit more. Yeah, yeah, I hope so. And I, 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 I mean, so you, so yeah, you have heart. to keep us, you have to keep us updated on that. Absolutely. I will do. We'll do is there thing. a, uh, is there a genre that you haven't done that you would like to try? Is there a genre? You know what? I would like to do some real historical pieces. Oh, I like, like that. You know? And, and I actually really like, um, like cross-cultural things. So I, you know, in Italy, I booked this Italian film. And so I would really like something that's multilingual. And uh, I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm really, I'm really interested and fascinated by other I mean, we're, we've kind of, um, we're in that, that place now where we're getting a lot of out of country products and yeah. which is amazing. There's some really good stuff coming into the country. So you would think at some point, you would start getting some of those. Uh, and you see it more on Netflix. Yeah. Netflix has like from scratch. It was one of their huge hits, yeah. right? About uh, somebody, I think from Texas that was in it's Italy yep. and, and that whole story. And there's a money heist or something, I think. That's oh, money heist is very Netflix. popular on Netflix. Right? Hugely popular, right? Yeah, so Squid actually Games this, came in. Yeah. There's a huge space for it. So this is a genre I'm really interested in. While I was in Italy, I actually wrote a couple of, of things um, during the pandemic. And so, yeah, a lot of things in the works. Just have to focus on one and then and then do the next. But I, I absolutely love that. That's yeah. That's do you speak that's... Italian? Parlo italiano. Mm, bene, bene. That's pretty good to me. <laughs> <laughs> I was really good there. I, I studied for a year. So when I meet an Italian, I can speak to them in their eyes. Like, oh, oh you speak best. Italian. So yeah, I can. I can and that's the on. best way to learn it. Kind of immerse yourself in it. Oh yeah, that's that's the way to go. <laughs> like you have no choice but to learn it. So I love that. Unfortunately, you know, I have to be in Italy to speak Italian because like, no one else does. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> that's the only caveat. Like, I can't really go anywhere other than Italy. Otherwise. I know, and if you if you don't use it, you're gonna lose it. Yeah, there's a lot of Italians here, though. I have a lot of Italian friends here. Oh, so good. We speak, yeah, good. we speak sometimes. So it's it's good. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, and all of those things, like you said, sort of lend to your creative life, yeah. right? And lend to your strengths as an actor and strengths as a creator when you write and when you play these parts. So I think that kind of full life is definitely what we need as artists. Yeah, like agree. just kind of staying in LA, just grinding. I think that's a very boring life. No, that's like, well said. Yeah, I like big, that. Yeah, right? And if you're going to be an artist, you need to experience life. Yeah, and spread so, your wings a little bit. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. And you know, you're in West Virginia, but you come out here. You, <laughs> you're, you're rock climbing. We love to travel. Yeah, we <laughs> you're love to travel. <laughs> you're living a full life you got this podcast you're doing great you did that's it. right that's right well jillian thank you so much for taking a little bit of uh time with us this has been terrific you thank have you. to come back at some point i absolutely will come back and i'm going to come back and we're going to be talking about the feature of broken or the limited series. I'm going to get it to get, get that That's part right. together after this film. And uh, yeah, we're going to really shine a light on the mental health stuff. It's such a huge part of my heart. And, um, and it really coincides with Sound of Hope because a lot of these kids have a lot of trauma. Right. and um and are dealing with some some serious issues and and we show that in the film that's one thing that makes the film great it's not just feel good oh look how amazing and cute yeah. like no we show some very real things and, and how difficult it is but how worth it it is so um that's part of what makes this film so special as that's well so, that's so great so it's sound of yeah. hope the story of possum oh. trot it is out yes. thursday july 4th Thursday, we're here. We finally yeah. got to opening week. And yeah. I want to hear your thoughts about it, okay? Oh, yeah. I'll let I you want know. you to send me a message with your thoughts. When you Absolutely. See it. Yeah, awesome. it's on our list. We're definitely going. So, yeah, yeah. I'll let you know. What, That's uh, great. What no, you're going to so, love it, really. A um, couple of little things before I let you, uh, before I let you go. Um, you anything it. else that you're working on that we can keep an eye out for? Yeah, well, like I said, so we're doing we're doing a screening of Broken and this virtual panel that is in two weeks. So uh, Sunday, I think it's the 14th for this National uh, Minority Mental Health Month um, and then so many other things in the pike. So I'd say follow me, pay attention and you'll see all of the things coming up. So where, uh, where can we find you on social media? 
So I'm most active on Instagram. I'm yeah, that's the, the best one, team. I think. It's the nicest. Yeah. <laughs> right. I had to get off of Twitter. Twitter was too wild. That was becoming a crazy person. Twitter. I know Twitter's one like we all have we're all on there, but it's usually just to kind of see what kind of nonsense is going on. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm only on it for crypto now. Like I'm really <laughs> off of it for anything else. But the only Jillian, and that's with the J. And then of course my website, I, I keep updated with all of my different projects oh, and nice. all of my different companies. I have some training things for actors. I have some, I have so many things happening, but you can see all of that on JillianReeves.com. Terrific. Well, Jillian, thank you so, so much. This has just been thank a you. Pleasure. This was fun. <laughs> all right. Hold on one second. Jillian Reeves, Jillian with the J. Um, she was terrific. I hope you enjoyed that. Apologies for uh, the, uh, the freeze up there halfway through. We've, I think the heat here in West Virginia, you know, we've been running high nineties with like 90% humidity. It's just putting a strain on the system and we've lost some power here and there. So apologies for that, but I hope you enjoyed that interview. The movie is sound of hope, the story of possum trot. Make sure you go out and support uh, the movie and Jillian and keep your eye out for Broken. I think that one is such an important project and good for her for working on that. <laughs> we, I think we froze up there for a second again, but we seem to be seem to be okay. Um, if you're finding us for the first time, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Please subscribe. It would really help us out. Um, our website is MeisterCon.com and it'll let you know anything that we have going on. And you can also find all 800 plus episodes, audio and video versions on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. Till next time. Bye everybody. <laughs>